Hello, hello, people. So Alex from 4F Games here with the Creative Build. And I don't know about anyone else, but I was inspired by the latest update to Minecraft. So to catch people up, uh, 1.19 added the wild update, which means frogs, swamps, and deep dark. Honestly, I didn't really want to build something so ominous and dark for the first project of the sort on this channel. So instead, I opted to try out the, uh, the more wild aspects of the update. And just to say, spoiler, that doesn't mean I built a giant frog, despite how cool it could have been. So instead, I asked myself, what do you think of when you hear the word wild? And what came to me is actually another question. What's more wild than magic? So with that, I give you my Twilight Groves Wilds. To the smart people out there, yeah, I definitely could have used World Painter, but sometimes I feel like uh, it's easier to stay motivated and get inspired when I'm building the whole thing by hand. Or a shovel, you know, given that it's World Edit. So I was trying to match some swampy elements to match with the actual update, but I uh, started with the most obvious part. So, you know, we started with the uh, the foundation, should we say. So, Michael, you're actually, uh, you're you're seeing this, you have seen it before, but in parts. I have, only parts. Not, not the whole completed. And not the start, I was not here for the start. Yeah, you, you joined me, so um, most of it was on my own. Um, but right at the end, Michael joined me and he helped with the really annoying part of the project, which was actually I changed my mind about how I wanted something to look. And I think it looks way better now, don't you? Oh, I think so too. It's definitely more survival friendly, at least. <laughs> yeah. If you ever wanted to survive here. Yeah. yeah, now now we're not going to die every time we, we take a step off of the wrong rock. <laughs> but um, do you think it's going to match the swampy vibes? I know, I know you saw bits and bobs. Do you think do you think I, I got it right eventually? It does feel like a swamp, although I suppose you are lacking in the mangrove department. That is quite a big part of the update. Yeah, I will be. So at the moment... Spoilery, apologies. Yeah. Well, it's not spoilery for long, at least. <laughs> so, uh, just to say, um, I, I'd started with some uh, some floating rocks, as you can see. Yeah. Um, when I think of magic, I always think of, like floaty and colourful. So uh, I, const I constructed these um, these boulders, and uh, yeah, the uh, these magical monoliths, should we say, to be uh, to be fancy, they um, they uh, protect the magical hotspot. Oh. Okay, the magical hotspot. Very yeah. ominous. Ominous? Hotspot, really? Well, hotspot sounds inviting, but magical and hotspot and protection. It sounds ominous a little bit. Maybe not ominous, but sec not secretive. I'm not sure the word. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, I want you to try to figure out what the magical hotspot is. Okay, you want me to try to figure it out? Yeah. Well, I couldn't help but notice that you started off using sand for this build. Is there any particular reason why you started from sand? Okay, I, I, um, there is actually a reason. So when I'm when I'm building, um, if you start with stone and stuff, it, it doesn't have gravity. So if you accidentally leave like a one block gap somewhere uh, and you're using replay or spectator or anything else, you'll see that one block gap. Okay. Whereas I find that if you use sand because it has gravity, you can make sure that the whole thing is solid. Basically, it just... Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. If you don't want little hollow bits, it might be a bit annoying. Yeah. So, especially to, oh, especially to mine in. Well, you don't think the giant floating rock would be difficult? Ah, I just nerd pull to it. Just a lot of dirt. A lot of dirt, a lot of dirt, dirt. scaffolding. <laughs> so, um, at the minute, it just looks like solid slabs of, of stone, right? I promise it does get better. Oh, you're going to add texture. I will. I'm going to add texture. So, like I said, I was going for a swampy, should we say, like a overgrown sort of magical plant life kind of theme. And oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I, I pasted it in the wrong place. Ah. Please, please ignore the uh, ineptitude of, of my <laughs> building technique. It's very trial and error. I'm sure the final product will more than make up for that little uh, pasting <laughs> error. Oh, I, I paste in the wrong place all the time. It's like I used to do this thing right where I would I'd purposefully put myself always on the north side of the project so I knew exactly where it was going to be. Okay. Um, yeah, I stopped doing it. I was going to say, this seems more like a Michaelism of just guesswork. You just guess where it's going to go, and then yep. when you paste it in wrong, you just redo it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, you've nailed that on the head. Uh, the one thing I've taught you then. <laughs> you've taught me a lot about Minecraft. I, I don't really keep up with a lot of the updates and the things that are going to be added, and you actually gave me a lot of... Um, like little hints and facts about this update before it dropped. 
So I kind of got the idea for this project kind of then before oh. I'd actually seen the real thing. Okay. So. Oh yeah, you didn't keep up to date with all the different snapshots, did you? So you had no, no idea what to anticipate. I knew we'd get frogs. I didn't even know what they'd look like. Um, I knew we'd get tadpoles and I knew that we'd get uh, mangroves, mm. but I'm going to be honest, look. no, I had no idea. So I, I couldn't actually add mangroves. I added, um, like I said uh, earlier, I did, I, I did add plants because I wanted it to be overgrown. Ah, well, but now doing some sort of water. So that's actually a really cool technique. It's where you add um, glass and then like a completely um, clear layer of air, and then you add more glass, and it gives you this like foggy effect. I can see that it's a very nice effect for the water. I wanted it to feel magical, and I felt like having the different layers of colours so that it seemed almost broken up. I felt like that worked. But uh, speaking of broken, so we don't use um, Optifine and we don't use shaders. And we don't use connected textures, so yeah. please ignore my, my glass failures there. <laughs> and then on that note, so well, people are too busy focusing on new texturing at the moment, which is very nice. Yeah, I finally got around to that. <laughs> it so, definitely helps. So yeah, um, I wanted to add this like this darker bit to the underneath to give us um, just a sense of the fact that it is actually three-dimensional. Otherwise, it, like I said, it was just a big slab of the uh, Minecraft stone. And now adding in a bit of green to... Yeah, we're finally bringing it to life a little. Yeah. Well, it definitely helps, doesn't it? Adding green to your build, it makes it feel way more alive, even if it's not necessarily grass, which I don't think you're yeah. necessarily using here. So I start with grass because there's a there's a technique, okay, in World Edit called Naturalize. It's a command, um, and it basically it replaces stone with um, how Minecraft would texture it. So you have a couple of blocks of dirt and you have grass on the top, but dirt blocks actually don't have green that goes all the way over unless you're using a texture pack. No, that's true. Which really annoys me. Does it? It does, yeah, because when you're trying to make a project like this and the scale is so big, using the grass block, there's not enough green to make um, it feel overgrown. It's just such a small pixel of green, isn't it? Yeah, so I replaced the grass block with moss, and then I extended the green by replacing the dirt itself with um, two different types of concrete. Christ, that's that's good for making it more, look more lush. <laughs> I feel like it works out, though, so it, it was well and truly worth it. Okay, that's true. So, um, other than, you know, my uh, my greenery and my obvious connected textures issue, um, I, what, what are you thinking so far? I'm thinking it's looking good so far, watching it all come together. And look, we've now got some weird pink object. Oh, that sounded way filthy. <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. No, no, keep it up. It's funny. Okay, but um, yeah, you've got some weird pink object now that's just appeared in front of us. What are you doing? We have a big woolen thread, big, big pink, uh, big uh, yarn ball. Yeah. Well, yarn thread. String. Well, if you can't guess, it's probably not a good idea, like a, a good sign, should we say? But I assume that they're going to be some kind of vines or chains or anchors between the. Uh, Ooh, I mean, chains and anchors would have been really good. You know, not very, you know me, I'm a fan of chains. Not but... very. <laughs> <laughs> Not very naturalistic, though, is it? No. Um, nature, nature. Oh, God. Na naturalist? Yeah, naturalist is where I was going with that. Um, so basically, uh, like I said before, we wanted to go as natural as possible. So yeah, big yeah. chains or anchors and things. Take away from that. Yeah, it, it, it'd kind of make it feel more industrialised than magical. So. Okay, so you were right, actually, on your first assumption. I did, I did go for vines. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Well, I'm glad you could recognise it, despite the fact that it is luminous pink. <laughs> it's true, but the way that they're weaving and wrapping around stuff, they do look very blimey. Oh, thank God. I, oh, I was not sure that you'd get it. Ah, uh, well, yeah, you know me. I'm, I'm the sharpest tool in the shed, if the other tools are spades. To be fair, some spades are really <laughs> sharp. So, it's still a compliment to you, man. I see. I must admit, it is a bit distracting having bright pink vines, though. Okay, so that's kind of a, a design choice, should we say? So I procrastinate a lot, and having the really pink vines, it makes it hard to look away for me. Okay. So it, it, it's basically like um like a little slap on the wrist to me to not procrastinate. I've got to come back. I've got to texture it. I've got to I've got to fix it. It'd be difficult to miss at least as well. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, when you're building something this big, and if you say you you miss something really really tiny on the back of one of these rocks. You can be flying around it, doing everything else, and completely miss it for hours and hours and hours. 
and you might um, have like have gone away and done something else or you might have even gone for lunch or a break or something and turned the game off so you might not have the command or not remember what you did to match with the rest of the project so it's really annoying to have to come back and then go what did i do why does this not look right <laughs> that makes sense so now you're adding some purple bits to your pink vines oh i feel like you were going to call them something else then <laughs> some, something filthy so um the the purple is to kind of um try to give it like a a worn down effect like a like a frayed effect almost okay because um if you ever see vines in in photos or in jungles or you know in games in general yeah if you're lucky enough to see them in person you'll know that um they actually are broken up they're kind of worn by things by by trees by plants by the weather by animals um it just kind of breaks them up and i wanted to give that overgrown vibe so things are climbing even along the vines yeah this is such an interesting colour palette for vines as well. <laughs> Very enchanted looking. It's definitely something magical going on here, I think. Magical or colourblind, one or the other. <laughs> colourblind, okay. No, I like it. It's fun. Uh, and now we'll move on to circles. We like circles. Painstaking, really, really poorly planned out. Um, <laughs> UFO rings. Yeah, so um, what, I, what I'm about to do I have regrets. Oh god, a big, a big sphere. Sphere? No, it's still in <laughs> That was actually ring after ring of birch. You've exploded the birch. Oh no, don't tell me you're placing candles in a hand. hand I did, I hand. did. I, I placed them all by hand and the, it gets be it's even better than that. They're not just one or two, they are random. Oh, one to four. <laughs> that is awful. I mean, I'm sure it's worth it in the end, but no, I couldn't. I could never do this. So... You see the little purple column that was disappearing there? That was... So that was how I kind of gauged how far down I'd got. I refused to walk away from it to put it down um, until I was done. Oh, okay. But I'd go from one block to the next, and when I thought all of the blocks had been covered below a certain point, okay. I would then um, destroy the purple tower. It did look good, though, the end result. Thank you. Look, you're doing weird, funny shapes. It's Pac-Man. That's Pac-Man, right? It's... Cold line Pac-Man, yeah. It's Pac-Man. No, it's got to be some sort of lily pad, right? On top of the water surface, it's got to be a lily pad. It is. And I was way too lazy because I was not going to be building the, um, you know, the underneath of a lily pad. Yeah. Have um, you ever seen the, it, the underneath of a lily pad? It's like, it's kind of viney, kind of like, it has like long stems and stuff. Oh yeah, I, I was not building that. I cocked out. I was like, you know what? I can, I can get by with the Minecraft one. <laughs> that's fine. Minecraft inspired build. That's It is. It is a Minecraft inspired build in Minecraft, you know, by the update. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest. This took um, me so long to do this project. It took me, what, a month, two? Yeah. In total. It, it was really really big so I how diverse the uh, the lily pads are and that's quite clearly some seagrass there i think that's got to be seagrass right is it not pond grass maybe Reed, <laughs> it's not reeds. really the sea reeds oh yeah that's true but thank you well, at least at least you can recognize it that's a good start i got the seagrass but not the lily pads until they were done now you're adding some uh, some little flowers not so little. Well, no, I suppose in the grand scheme of things, they're quite large compared to your character, aren't they? I mean, how tall is a Minecraft character? It's supposed to be two two meters, just under. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at the different flowers. Got this. I bet this took ages designing um, the, each individual flower. I kind of cheated here as well because I didn't design them. Okay. I based a lot of them off of the, the Minecraft flowers, the ones that were already in the game. They're still, you still had to replicate them though. You still had to find a way to replicate them in your build. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, getting the scale right was probably the, the most difficult part. Because, I mean, the actual pixels in Minecraft, the colour palette, I guess, the, the difference between the shades, is not actually as, like, as spread as you think it is. Okay. So if you're looking at it in-game, you can find something, uh, like a block, that is roughly the right colour, and it's fine. And there we had a magic shroom. Oh, oh yes. And some weird brown plates. Okay. These these weird brown plates, okay, are actually, uh, they are fungus as well. Okay. So they are based on a real fungus, which I'm going to be honest, I, even if I knew the name, I couldn't pronounce it. Yeah, that's like a little sign. Yeah, the, the Latin is a little complex for me, but I'm going to be honest, I actually really like looking at these funguses. So they grow on trees, on rocks, 
anywhere basically that a fungus can grow mm. and they grow in rings they're actually really really well known you'll see them on on photos of trees i think the most i don't know what you're talking about but i couldn't tell you the name but i do know what you're talking about this was my attempt to kind of steal that idea of this like um ring fungus that's climbing up that's overtaking the uh the rock i guess it has a nice effect you know so the rock's not so bad and here another mushroom i do like the mushrooms it does give magical fantasy like swamp vibes mario-esque mario -esque. <laughs> hopefully nobody's going to eat these ones because they by the color of them they're probably poisonous oh yeah definitely some more flowers flowers are always good i think flowers are kind of like a, a thing that depending on where you are in the world you find different flowers so you get like the stories behind them mm -hmm. So in England, we have um, a lot of daisies, a lot of buttercups, and I'm assuming buttercups and daisies are, you know, everywhere. But I think sometimes you see things like, um, uh, so say for example, in Japan, there's a lot of uh, cherry blossoms, aren't there, the trees? Yeah. Um, in swamps, you find mangroves. I think the types of flowers and like in trees and plants and whatever, I think that really makes an area yeah like recognizable it definitely helps with not acknowledge the fact that you have done some trees here yeah so they were actually um something i'd got a schematic of from ages ago well done it oh, okay um i kind of stole them from like a a really bad attempt at making bonsais <laughs> but it, you know yeah it i felt like they fit the thing more close to colors and here we have a nice like little overview of what you've done you can see the uh the mushrooms were actually um Functional, I suppose, is the best word. Quick because... roller coaster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> roller coaster. Yeah, my, my camera's not very smooth. I do apologise for that. <laughs> um, so the mushrooms and the plants, I actually put lanterns in and, and light sources so that it felt almost bioluminescent. Okay. We also did just see a tree jumping. So I did the classic YouTuber um, annoying thing of I forgot to start my recording, so I started making it. I went off for lunch, and uh, I didn't put I didn't put the recording back on when I came back. Oh no! So you see, like all the, the canopy just, just fly back in. <laughs> I do love the vines, though the way that they're taking over. I wanted it to feel overgrown. I mean, when I you did... when you think of life in anything, it's always plants first, isn't it? That's always what takes it back. It's true. I also appreciate the use of the different coloured vines. I almost wanted it to feel like it was competing. Because if you go yeah. somewhere like the rainforest, you see so many different types of plants that you can't just have one type of tree or one type of flower. So having these two types of vines, it's like like there's multiple types of plants, even though they're kind of the same thing. Well, it seems to work out. Definitely taking the inspirations on pretty well. Thank you. Oh. Keep, keep the praise coming. This is, this is really good. This is good for my ego. Oh, I'm well dead. <laughs> Regrets it will ensue. Some, oh, yeah. Some more sand. So, um, with something like this, oh. um, you have smaller areas within the bigger area, and that includes um, more habitable areas, should we say. Okay, well, yeah, here we've clearly got some kind of ruins. Shall uh, we talk about that? Yeah, so the ruins were based on Stonehenge, ah. uh, a place in England. Uh, which is, you know, probably around the world known to be kind of linked with folklore or like um, alien or it's ancient yeah, ancient origins. Yeah. Well, speaking of ancient civilizations, do you have any little green? Well, I suppose not very little, but you know, green folk living in your swamp. Who needs ogres, Michael? And I have you. Oh, aren't you charming? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. After all the praise as well. <laughs> oh, I'm heartbroken. Well. To be fair, if you're an ogre, so am I, so... <laughs> okay. We share a brain cell, let's be honest. Yeah, just the one. So... Oh. Yeah, so this... Um, I didn't want the project to be just on a super flat. No. It really annoys me when you've got this really cool or really different looking terrain, and then it's just flat. Yeah, it's <laughs> coming bit, away from it. It's a bit boring, isn't it? So I, I tried to bring it into a, a normal Minecraft world, something like you said, to make it more survival friendly. I couldn't help but notice that you did decimate a village in the process of making this. So actually, right, mm -hmm. fun fact, I didn't kill the villagers in the clip that you saw. Okay. I, no, I did not go around with a sword beforehand either. Um, okay. So I, I misplaced the world when I was trying to paste um, my project in. So actually, it was off camera, technically, on this bit. 
but um, they all fell to their deaths the first time I pasted it in, not the second. Oh, I see. So you could have said they were nice, you know, they're, they're relocated, they're living happily in a swamp. No. Singing, dancing, and praising, and, you know, loving the moonlight. I don't know. They're uh, doing the rain dance. They're doing the rain dance, yeah. Yeah, sure. I like that. I like okay, that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's keep that. Um, narrative going i i <laughs> so, did not so make them better. yeah i did not make them fall 100 feet to their death no okay. they're living in you know they're living in the sunlight living a wonderful time <laughs> okay so currently you're quite clearly trying to kind of mesh it towards the surrounding area i was yeah so i try to bring in the same naturalization um is that a word uh, sure it is now <laughs> i tried to bring that kind of mossy um concrete kind of overbearing green back into it okay but i didn't want to go too far so i was kind of trying to bring the the minecraft grass and my overgrown grass i guess together a little it's bit a gradient almost yeah thin it out as you get further yeah with a couple of little uh snags. terrain alter <laughs> alterations oh, okay. yeah alter yeah not, not not snags just a you know just little um what's, what's the word i'm thinking of the uh like tweaks that's the one tweaks. look at you go like you've done some sort of drugs <laughs> i was i was really going for it in this one so just from how quickly you can see my character moving that gives you an idea of how long each step of this project took. i was there for hours i i yeah. haven't seen the sign in weeks i haven't seen you look you got more more vines kind of coming out from the water almost tendril like grasping the surrounding areas yeah that kind of gives away the magical source doesn't it a little bit is it i wouldn't necessarily say that i wouldn't know i still don't know what it is so for the people at home maybe you could tell us okay so um oh damn i feel like i've been talking a lot but uh, i was kind of trying to make it the the water the water was the the origin of the, the like the magic in this area so the vines are coming up out of the water the mushrooms and the flowers all kind of seem more prominent nearby the water mm. I mean even the bit up the top where there was the tiny little um, pool of water mm. so all of that is kind of added together to make the water this, this source of life I guess yeah well you did build the ten tendrils oh, well they are tendril like to me but the vines <laughs> coming from the water it, got some it, Cthulhu look in there <laughs> it, does, it does seem and they are definitely grasping the surrounding areas so, almost invasive a little yeah like i said competitive almost a little bit yeah um far reaching well yeah so the magical source was the water to anybody who uh who clocked that no i didn't i mean no i did you had to uh you totally didn't have to tell me that at all just for the viewers right yeah, just for the yeah. viewers i totally <laughs> I, I was just like ah oh, the vines are coming from the water the source must be friendship yeah <laughs> so um it, there was actually inspiration there from that one because um basically all life on on earth didn't it started in the water it did so i figured that technically therefore the, the most alive thing or the most um happened well what's the what's the word i'm thinking of like optimal i guess the optimal place for life to take place is in the water yeah it's clever it's a clever way of going about it huh? <laughs> well thank you so this was um this was actually like a little oh an idea so when the vines come from above, they are they're too far from the water almost. So they start to reach back down towards the water, but they're they're not as dying almost. Yeah, they're not as as alive. And you've done a little gradient to show that as well. It's quite interesting. That gradient was actually a lot more annoying to work out than you think. <laughs> Getting it to go from green to brown was was a weird little challenge for me. Yeah, yeah. and of a nice. This is a really pretty shot. That's probably my favourite view of the entire project. It's nice. And you can see... Yeah, yeah this was where you joined I was going to say before, it seemed like you were done, but here you've got me slaving away, digging underneath. This I hadn't really seen anything of this build other yeah. than the underneath of the lily pads. Yeah, I told him he wasn't allowed to look above the, uh, the, like the lily pads themselves. I just had to help dig, like a dwarf. <laughs> oh, she's also a fantastical creature, so it fits. Do you remember what I said to you that day? Oh, if you see green, look back down. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Actually, I think it was if you see green, mind your business. But you know, mind my business. Yeah. I think it was. I think it was. You know, fitting at least. Okay, but yeah, made a D, but then with a black 
will be underneath and I filled it full of indrods. So, okay, I finally have an explanation for you as to why I gave you this weird little task. Okay. So, um, when I was building and the um, the sky was, was going past me, I, I was noticing that the stars were actually like a really cool thing. And then when I was when I was editing, I noticed that the, the sky was moving really quickly. And this idea okay. of this, like the night sky, mm -hmm. I really liked it. But how I'd got the glass, you couldn't see anything below it. Like it was very murky, but it, it almost seemed not magical enough. Okay. So what I was going to do here was to try to replicate that like end portal kind of um, like pitch black night sky that where the, the stars actually seem to like follow you like the eyes of paintings. Oh, I mean, it's a very nice effect. Looks kind of bottomless almost as well. Yeah, it's like the void, isn't it? It is. So a lot of people that do this tend to do it with more than one layer. I only use the one um, simply because it was taking me so long to do the project already that I just wanted to, to share it with people. I wanted to get it out there. You know? well, um, it has been a very nice project. I've enjoyed watching this. I'm Let's very glad. So um, I'm not really sure what else to say about it now. I think I've uh, rambled myself out. You yeah, have. This has been a very nice, very well done build. Look, here's the finishing touches. Here we are, just showing it off now. I say, where are you? In my it's really, good. really bad spectator cam. <laughs> it's a bit, bit juddery, but, you know, bear with us. We know so, what we're doing. Yeah, so you can see the vines on the tree actually grew in, <laughs> finally. Oh, wow, that, that does look way better now that you've pointed that out. That's how long it took me to build it. The vines grew in. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, This has been 4 a Gaming. Until next time. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.